Alright then guys, we are back again with some more of the aquatic stage. I'm recording this immediately after the previous episode, so I've yet to see any feedback, any questions and such. Like I said, I know you guys have really been hungry for more, so I want to get these rolling a little bit faster. Now the main thing that we left off from from the previous episode is one, we to downscale a couple of these parts here, they're all just a bit too large, but mainly two, is that I was severely lacking in some very specific type of creation, some very specific type of props. So we've done a lot of episodes here, you know, to do the actual adventure itself. So how about we do one that actually involves making the props? So just like everything else, I want the props to be made in the creature editor just because it's better graphics. It's just, you, you could just do more with it. I don't know about you guys, but I feel like that the creature editor is just much more versatile for making plants than any other ed editor is. Like ironically, the creature editor is probably better for making plants than a plant editor itself. <laughs> Which is a thing, by the way, for those of you who don't know, but it's a very much a like a locked hidden thing. So, anyway, moving on, moving on. For this creation, the first one is give it a head to make it asymmetrical so it halves the complexity. Obviously, if I want to be sharing all this online, it needs to have a functional mouth that way it actually shares onto the Sporpedia. So I have mainly two types of plants in mind, both of which are inspired by Subnautica. And first of all is like some very, very large, um, I'm not really sure how you describe it, but it's like very platey looking. Like imagine trees with a bunch of plates. I'm not going to be making it now anyway, so we'll see it in a moment. Let's just see if we can try and make that bit there go a little bit larger. Now, the bottom of the crea creation is going to be, like, buried into the sand anyway, so it doesn't really matter how the bottom of it looks. If anything, I just need to make sure it's tall enough. So let's go ahead then and make it all a little bit wavy. In fact, judging by my reference, it's actually got, like, quite the thick trunk. So let's actually make that a lot thicker. And make it end up to about, I don't know, kind of that height. Now, I also want to be asymmetrical, I want to be like all curved like this, that way it actually, you know, has like a nice 3D effect to it and isn't, you know, just curved on the one plane, does that look a little bit strange? And I think that is good for the base. Now next thing is, how am I going to do this bit in particular? So like I said, it's going to have some very large plates. And the plates are probably going to be made of nail downs because Let's just face it guys, nail downs really are the most versatile part in Vanilla Spore. So no mods, it's just nail downs all the way, so I'll probably be using that. I'm trying to think of the piece underneath it. Actually, I'm overthinking it. Let's just use this. Right, we'll have this one piece here. So that'll be the very small, bit of a long piece, but very small. That's going to be like the stalk. So like that, and then on top of it, we're actually going to have the large plate itself. So we're going to have that slightly embedded like that. And then when I make it much larger, now it actually comes out properly. Now the only the only issue is... Actually, it's not doing what I want at all. Right, that's going to backfire it. That's fine then. I'm probably overthinking it to be fair. It's, it wouldn't be the first time. It won't, won't be the last time. I do tend to overthink these things. Let's just have it stick all the way out like that instead. And then we can just stick the plate on top of it. So there we go, that is one idea. So yeah, you can kind of like see the general vibe I'm going for here. What I also do is have a couple of much smaller ones that are embedded into the stalk itself, into the trunk, we'll call it. So ones like that. Now what's been really, really lovely is that a lot of the submissions you guys have been giving me when it comes to like the more uh, flora type of stuff is I'm seeing like a very consistent pattern. You're all using nail downs. So like I understand why nail downs are like a very, very you know, useful parts, because like I said earlier, they're the most useful, they're the most durable, but in the case of these coral, they're just, they're just the best fitting, aren't they? And at the very top, I do want it to be significantly larger as well. Right, I can't make it that much large because, you know, spore its limits, but I can make it that kind of size. Uh, but a lot of you guys have been telling me to get like this mod or that mod. I do appreciate all the suggestions, but I am making this without mods intentionally. I do not want this project to be modded at all. So when it comes to things like the infinite scaling, which I'm very, very much used to, I can't use it this time, unfortunately. So now that we've got all the nail downs and like the major big plates in place, I do want to have like a couple of like little small details here and there. And I actually want to use a spit part here, which I really never use but i just thought i could be like a nice fitting piece here just like gives a little bit of uh, variety it kind of looks like there's little bulbs coming off the cre off the um plant i don't know what they'd be used for but again though just a nice bit of variety 
quickly add, oh, whoops, <laughs> that's not how you spell add DNA. Add a whole bunch of DNA. And what else do we want to use? Definitely some jelly buttons. We always need those random little holes. Those, I think it's like where a couple of creatures nest. Right, that's looking quite good so far. And then last thing is I just want a bit of these feathers. Just to have like a bit of a more flora feel to the otherwise, you know, very rigid plant. And then finally, last but not least, I think just a couple of little random, very much smaller little nerd down parts here and there, just to give it a bit of variety. Right then, I think that's a fair looking plant structure there. Now as for the coloration, <laughs> I'm actually really not sure about the coloration. Let's just try then. So like I said, this isn't divided by a certain plant from some Nautica. Let's try and give it like a bit of a similar feel. So it's got like a rather dark trunk. It's got like a bit of a grayish, bluish green kind of trunk thing going on. Uh, what if I make that red and that green? Okay, so the nail downs are going to be red. So in that case, I would actually like it to be like a very bright, vivid color. Let's try orange. That's not bad. Oh, I actually really like that. Okay, I do really, really like that. And then the green is among the feathers and such. Yep. Oh, I quite like that, but no, not quite. For that, I would actually like a much lighter colour. Because right now it's looking very, very dark. And so I'd like to offset it a little bit with some lighter shades. Uh, <laughs> not yellow. No, more like a, like, probably like a cream or like a very pale greyish colour scheme. All right then, that I do quite like. Now I'm just gonna call it, I don't know, like coral tree prop and write in uh, GA prop. That way this doesn't randomly get shared into people's games. You see a bit of a issue with Galactic Adventures and making props. Uh, wait, what? No, go away. Is that creations can spawn anywhere. And if you don't have a GA prop, then sometimes you get some very unfortunate players. I get to experience things like toilets for city holes or uh, random broken creatures that weren't really intended to animate or anything. And you know, like you just, you just get like a very, very big mess of a playthrough. So if you add GA prop into the tags and GA prop alone, no other tags, it prevents it from mucking up other people's games. Right. So that there is one example. And these are meant to be rather large. So we're gonna have like one here, for example. I will just have a couple of here and there, just like show some examples. I may like have a couple of different variants of these, get some different colors going on. In fact, when I embed them, like I said earlier, they're meant to be like somewhat embedded into the ground. That one there, that one there. I definitely might add a fair amount more to them. So uh, parts of it do look a little bit plain. Then again, though, it wasn't meant to be like highly uh, detailed anyway. So that's one idea. That's one prop concept. Now to extend off from the previous ideas, like I said, I did want some very large flat coral things. And this might seem a, a little bit strange as a prop, but I also want just one singular large uh, surface. So that way I can just place it on top of the ones as I see fit. So let's go ahead then and make a really large singular flat to nail down. <laughs> nice and boring. And let's try and try and kind of like merge them together if I can. Now this is going to be very tricky to make look good. But the idea of this is that these are going to be fairly high up. So in reality they don't really need to be very detailed. They just need to look fine, you know, from below. That's that's going to be no problem. If anything, from below is going to be quite obscured. So again, all I need is just a large flat surface and that is that done. And otherwise, how big can I make this? Not very big at all, okay, that's unfortunate. Well, in that case, uh, just for the sake of detail, I will have like a couple of random pieces on top of this because I don't want it to just be completely plain for the sake of it, but I'm not gonna nitpick over it and try and make it perfect either. Let's just get like a couple of little small, little, little like clam-like things. Let's get another bunch of uh, these like we did last time. So one there, make that large. Another one there, make that small. Actually make them both a lot smaller. One there, one much smaller there and there. And otherwise, I think I might be another one done. So it doesn't really take much, does it? Coral plate, geoprop. Now I intentionally want it to be the same color as the other one. That way I can use them together. So we'll do that. We will save, it's got quite a nice texture as well, actually. Right, save it, good, cancel. Otherwise it'll prompt me to make into a captain. And we'll disguise that, grab it, and how does it look in-game? 
it looks quite fine. So then I can now combine it on top of that and make a much, much larger plate like that. Very, very simple, but now it's casting like this nice big shadow and it just looks, you know, like again, it just changes the dynamic of the uh, environment. It just makes it like a little bit bigger, a little bit more foreboding. And like I said, from the bottom, it really doesn't look that bad at all. So now that is a piece I can use in various areas and it can also help me make like all these different ones just like kind of vary up a little bit so maybe this one for example will have a large plate lower down like this this does mean that the top will be a bit more visible but we won't judge just yet we'll place that there and see how it looks like so yeah again not bad not bad at all let's zoom out it's fine to be honest like it's a little bit uh, it does have like a very strange little bumpy texture there but again given spore I really think it's fine okay then now to make another very very simple prop idea this one's gonna be extraordinarily simple but it's one that I can have in a lot of different areas it's, again the same process again and again make that as small as possible give it a very very tiny head that way you know again it shares it saves etc and then for this one, like I said, it's going to be extraordinarily simple. We're going to give it like a nice big plate just to increase the surface area. Like so. And this is going to be like some kind of bush. Just like the large uh, red coral thing that we had before, this is going to be like a much smaller one. And it's quite simply just going to be like a bit of a bush. So we'll have that. In fact, I might even take into the tribal editor and see if I can like add some more. Uh, let's just make all of that bit smaller in fact yeah I think I might have to take it to a travel editor but we'll see we'll see what we can get away with because I want this to kind of come out into a ball like that trial and error guys trial and error so we're nearly finished with that one then it's come out a little bit wider than I would have liked but honestly I think it's fine ah nearly done there we go in fact we we'll just make the entire thing smaller now yeah, there we go. That's exactly what I wanted. Nice and bunched up. Great. And this, uh, how's that going to colour? It's got an interesting colour scheme there, but no. I want this one to be like more of a green or red. We've got a lot of red going on already. Let's go for a green. Right, there we go then. I'm going to call this one bush. I mean, <laughs> it really doesn't need any special name. It's honestly all it is, just a simply a bush. Now that's again, I can have different colours of, but for now we'll just stick one... Here, see how it looks. It seems to have like a nice little variety there. So we'll just add like the occasional bush here and there. Like, ooh, like that. <laughs> Stop moving that one, please, game. Oh, God. There we go. I do have this habit where I click on the uh, orbs and the wheels too quickly. And I therefore like actually miss them entirely. But there we go. So that's like another little idea there. In fact, they kind of look like urchins. That's the thing that we're lacking, sea urchins. Hmm. I suppose we don't really need them. We don't need every, you know, um, Terran creature. But it would be quite neat, though, to have, like, that big a variety. So we'll have, like, another one over here. Like, maybe these can accompany the larger red ones. In fact, if I make a red variant, they can accompany the red ones. That would make quite a bit more sense and would just look nice. And again, just really makes the area look, like, rich in terms of uh, life, colours, shapes, etc. Right, I've got one more idea to share with you guys and we'll call it to an end. Alright, so I've got one more idea to share with you guys and then we'll call it to an end. Now this one was inspired by the ones in Monster Hunter. So I described in a previous episode about how there are these parts that are very large, very wide, but had like very fine leaves. And that is a thing that just doesn't really exist much in Spore, unfortunately. So let's go ahead and try see if we can get like a bit of our own thing going on. This will all be very, very rough because... I mean, it's, it's just going to be rough. There's not much I can do about it. But mainly, I want this to be tall. So let's just quickly test something. Make sure it doesn't mess up. If I place that now... Okay, good. It actually follows with it. Good. There's a bit of a glitch in Spore sometimes where if you move a part... Or if you've got, like, a part connected and you move its base, it kind of floats. And that's really not what I wanted. What is going on there? Oh, God. Okay, I think it's all glitched out a bit. All right, we're going to try and undo as little as we can because whenever I press undo, it does seem to glitch things out a little bit. Right, so how, what's going to be the best way for me to do this? Probably using the grass part, to be honest. So, 
quite simply, it's like I said, it's going to be very, very large, very wide, and a lot of grass. It's going to be like a kind of canopy type of thing going on here. So like I said before, when it comes to the coral forest, I want it to be large, I want it to be wide. I have taken it back a little bit, you know, I've taken some, um, reconsidered. I don't want it to be necessarily really detailed, really packed, because I... Uh, I actually quite like that. It glitched, but I actually really like that new shape. Okay then. <laughs> As I was saying, I've uh, reconsidered it. I don't want the coral forest to be really, really packed. But I do want to have a can canopy. I think that will like have a very similar effect, but without the problem of players, you know, having collision issues. Because like I mentioned before, a collision in Spore is notorious, especially when the camera in Spore is also terrible. You've got a bad camera, bad collision. You're gonna have a bad time. So it's actually preferable to have open spaces or at least roomy areas, such as if you do like an indoor environment. You want it to be roomy, that way you have less of a chance of having like bad camera placement, bad collision, etc. I need to try and apply that logic to this adventure as well, make things big and open. But I still want it to feel busy. I still want it to feel a bit crowded, which again is, you know, the big canopy parts like this is going to insist in that. And I just pressed undo. Oh god, regrets. I need to not press undo. So I'm going to tell you guys something. Making a creation without ever hitting Control z you know, without ever hitting undo, is surprisingly hard and requires a lot of attention to not accidentally do it. I've had to reset this creation so many times because I accidentally keep on pressing undo and Spore does what it does and just completely like wrecks it. Oh, okay, but we're, but we're, we're nearly there. We're nearly there. Um, now it's gonna look a little bit messy from underneath, but again, just like with the large, the larger coral plated things, it's not really gonna be much of a problem because it's gonna be very, very tall, and you're not really gonna pay much attention to them. I'm adding these feathers on the top here just to like give it a bit more variety, a bit more color. In fact, I think I might do the same thing from below as well. So I have like one there again. Really gonna make sure I don't accidentally press undo. And oh, okay, so add. A whole bunch of DNA. If you guys have no idea how paranoid I am, it's just gonna snap again. <laughs> like, what's happening is that whenever I press undo, you'll see like the entire creation will kind of like jolt up from the ground to get higher, which is fine. But as a result, the limbs just kind of. I don't know, man. They, they, it's just weird things happen and it's really unpleasant. <laughs> right, but we're nearly done. We are nearly done. We are, we of course gonna have like a couple of little clam things here as well. So I have one there, I have another one there, which would be a lot smaller. Like that. Just so we've got like a little bit of, little bit of like subtle details to look at, to admire. And I think that's otherwise about it. So, uh, first things first, let's just call it canopy, uh, GA prop. I'm gonna save it in case I mess something up here. Excellent. Now, I do want to make the tree just a little bit asymmetrical because I don't like the way it's all completely the same. And as you can see, everything just popped. And now it's floating. Damn it. <laughs> Please let the saved one not be floating. Oh, it is. No. And it's that's happened. No. Well, actually, I can just fix it by doing that, can't I? Oh, God. This, this game is so glitchy. Okay, you know what guys? It's fine. It's fine. Right. Now what I want to do is to raise or raise the entire thing up. Which has caused it to spaz out a bit. Oh no, the entire idea just backfired. Oh man, well... It's just got like a random floating Jesus grass at the top there. Oh, well, you can see what I was going for anyway. Alright then, so maybe not today then. But I had like a very, very tall canopy plant in mind. Maybe we can salvage it. Let's see if I can just about barely get that. Get one up there. Bring those back up. As long as white, as I was hoping. Now that I can see like the actual, you know, height. But... <laughs> Maybe we can get away with it. Okay, it is actually as tall as it can be. Alright. Man, I backfired so badly. And I very nearly pressed Control z again there. Alright then, well, again, you see, you see the idea. Okay, so let's not have it go to waste. Let's at the very least see what it would look like. 
So like I said, the idea was a very, very tall canopy tree. And we'll have that next to, let's just have it like next to that for now, which it really doesn't look as good. Oh God, <laughs> really? Well, it's not terrible. It's definitely not terrible. Um, as we're coming in, it's not very good. Okay, no, all right. Well, that was an idea. It goes to show guys that not every idea works, but it's worth trying. They're absolutely worth trying. But uh, that being said, if anyone wants to make me a better version, I will love you very, very much. <laughs> but otherwise, guys, I think that is a good amount of time. Good amount of time spent making some more props and, you know, seeing more of the process. So I think I'm going to crack on and really fit out the place a bit more. I won't finish it, but I will fit it out a bit more, have a bit more of an idea, and that way we can really crack on with a lot more progress next episode. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you're enjoying it, if you've got anything that you want to share, any ideas, any questions, please don't forget to comment down below. And as always, like and subscribe. I hate saying it, but it really and truly does help. These episodes have been kicking off like crazy. A lot of people have been loving them and it's because of you guys for liking, sharing, commenting. The algorithm loves it and therefore so do I. <laughs> so again, thank you very much and have a wonderful day.